Hey there, Greg Dixon here, author of Tips and Traps When Buying a Business and author of Tips and Traps for Writing an Effective Business Plan. Today I want to talk to you about a couple of things that I think are really important. I want to talk to you about the history and the uh, just the history of sales and marketing and where it's headed and what's changed. Because so much of what I learned as I was growing and and uh, developing my business chops, so to speak, in terms of selling, uh, in terms of making sales, uh, doing marketing, and that sort of thing. So much of what I learned is was really good stuff. Really helped me in my career and in my business. However, a lot of things have changed. Uh, you know, in the, since the 70s and the 80s and, and, and even in the 90s. There's so much more that we know now that we didn't know before. And so what I wanted to do is just kind of have a conversation with you about that. This isn't scripted. Uh, it's just, you know, I'm just uh, sitting here, just sitting in front of the microphone, the video camera, just wanting to have a, a little bit of a conversation with you. And probably one of the biggest shifts uh, so that I've been thinking about lately is just around the way that we do our sales and the way we do our marketing. So much of what we've been taught, so much of what is, has been taught and is still being taught by many of the most popular personal development and, uh, uh, you know, and, and sales training gurus and, and, and people that are just really well known and been very successful in it still they're still teaching it and it's and it's all around pain versus pleasure that one of the key things that we that we used to be taught is that we need to understand our customers pain and get them in touch with the pain that they're experiencing in their life uh, to move them towards pleasure because people move away from the teaching that we had was that people move away from pain uh, much more than they'll move towards pleasure. And so what we were taught is how to ask questions, how to really uh, to draw out and magnify people's pain. And I think because of that over the years, I think salespeople that were really good at it, uh, salespeople that were uh, really embracing it, really kind of got a bad rap. They really, because they really pushed people. Uh, and, you know, it, was, it wasn't it was exactly a pleasant thing to to go and, 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 and do business with them because, you know, they they were really, you know, it's like scratching the scab. And I, I know a little bit about what I'm talking about because for years I taught the same the same thing. One of the things I've I've come to a realization is that, uh, you know, not just now, but you know, I taught for many years, is that if we want to improve our marketing, we want to improve our ability to make a sale, we need to understand our customers' needs, our customers' wants, their emotions and perceptions, because that makes up a mix of the things that are driving them, and so there I always taught that their needs were a problem, some problem, some pain point, something that they that they didn't have, something that they were struggling with or dealing with that caused them, that was the foundation to find out where they were at with their current challenge, with their pain, with their, you know, this whole um, problem. And then uh, their wants would be sort of the pleasure side in terms of what they want to move towards. And so I spent a lot of time teaching that. And then I talked about, you know, so we have needs, wants, emotions, and perceptions. Well, uh, it, it was sort of, I taught this hierarchy in terms of you need to understand what the customer's problem is, their, what their needs are. You need to understand what their wants are. Their wants are the things that they really or are, are, want to move towards, whereas the needs is something, a pain or a problem they want to move away from, their wants were something that they were, you know, wanting to move towards, something they wanted to experience. 
Now there are emotions, so needs, wants, emotions, and perceptions, NWEP was my acronym. Uh, and the reason I'm sharing all this is I want to have a conversation, talk about what I think the next step is, the next evolution uh, is going to be in terms of how we go about our marketing and sales. So you got needs, wants, and now let's talk about emotions. So our emo you know, it was taught by Anthony Robbins and based on research by Stanford University that people uh, uh, buy with emotion, they justify it with logic. Well, I think that's still true. However, uh, you know, we, we, so what we would do in the sales process is, you know, understand their needs, you know, what's the pain, you know, what's the problem that they're wanting to move towards, get them associated with their pain, with their problem, and then say, here, here's what you really want, and here's my solution for that. But then what we needed to do is really to connect them with the emotions of what that might mean in terms of what they might experience, so positive emotions, or it could be even the emotions of the of uh, negative emotions of pain in terms of, you know, if I've asked a lot of questions. So, for example, if I'm working, say I'm uh, uh, trying to sell a car to somebody and never did sell cars, but as an example, if I was trying to sell cars to somebody, uh, I might ask them the question. So, you know, so so how's your current car? Well, you know, my car has got, you know, I got a lot of problems with it. It broke down the other day. Oh, really? It, it broke down. It broke down here? Yeah, yeah. I was, uh, I was coming back from Edmonton and the thing just like died. I don't know what the heck happened. Pulled over to the side of the road and we just kind of had, we kind of waited, tried to figure out what would happen and uh, called a tow truck. Then by the time the tow truck got there, the damn car would just start. I don't know what the heck was wrong with it. And so then I might ask the question, well, geez, what was that like? You know, the car just died on you? Really? And, you know, so what was that like? And so then, you know, I'd ask questions uh, of this person, you know, well, you know, what was that like? You know, how did you feel? You know, um, must have been pretty frustrating. You know, um, uh, what, what were some of the things that you tried? So I'd try to take them through. You know, I would. Uh, this is stuff I used to teach: is take them through reliving that painful experience, get them really heavily and strongly associated with the pain that they felt, because the more emotion, the bigger, the bigger that that emotion was, and that that emotional charge that they had around, you know, the, their car not working for them. Then I say, well, hey, this car isn't going to break down yet. And if it does, we're going to come out and we're going to fix it. And uh, we're going to, you know, you're not going to have to wait. We're to, and we're going to make sure it's fixed properly. And you're not going to have that because, uh, you know, your car is like seven years old. This car is only three years old. And, uh, you know, we, we've gone through a hundred point safety check. We redid the brakes. We redid this. We redid that. You know, then I would talk about, you know, how much better than the this car is because uh, the bigger their pain it was that, that what we were taught is and what i used to teach was that you know bigger someone's pain was relating to their problem uh the the more emotional momentum there was for them to want to purchase my solution purchase my goods and services and so that was what i used to teach and then so needs wants emotions and perceptions now one of the things I think is still, and all these things are still true, we still buy based on our needs, wants, emotions, and perceptions. However, I think what has shifted, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come to in a minute, so I want to finish this pro four-step process, needs, wants, emotions, and perceptions. So now let's talk about perceptions. So if I'm, uh, if I, so, you know, if I'm talking to this client, we're talking about, you know, we've, we've talked about the, their frustrations and their pain related to their car breaking down. And wanting to sell them a newer car, a better, supposedly a better car, um, then you know I need to understand what their perceptions are. And so, for example, you know uh, what if they have any perceptions around used car salespeople, like who doesn't, or they have any perceptions around you know what it's like to uh, to buy the in terms of the process to get approved for a loan, or to stop the process, or what's involved with buying a car. Uh, what am I going to do with my old car? So I need to uncover what their perceptions are about where they're at, what they think of the new car 
and what they and and what they think of the you know what they're going to need to do to get to the next stage in the process uh, to get them to actually do the transaction to actually buy what I'm wanting to sell them. So needs, wants, emotions, and perceptions. That's still I think really important. However, I think there's uh, what we've found is that like the, there's negative using those negative markers using pain uh, and, and you, using those things that does work on the short term it does uh, you know help move people along in the selling and buying cycle however I think there's something that is much stronger than that that is much less negative uh, and we, we need to, you know, obviously our products and services need to solve a problem for people. Otherwise, why would they buy it? <clears throat> so we need to have, a, we need to understand the problem, but we don't need to keep, keep beating them over the head with it. Uh, you know, to keep beating the, the horse till it's dead and keep beating this poor customer up about what their pain is. Because what we want to do, I think that the, the next phase and what, one of the things I want to explore in this conversation is, what about their aspirations? You know, what would it, you know, if I had a conversation with them about their car in terms of, you know, you know, what kind of a car are they looking for? What, and if I connected, so if I found out what their aspirations were, you know, what type of vehicle, uh, the color, um, the style of the vehicle, you know, uh, how important it was for the brand of the vehicle and and how it made them feel. So, for example, I think there's a real difference in the people that aspire to own a Mercedes or a BMW than the people that aspire to own a Ford or the people that aspire to own a Chev or whatever. There's or and there's a difference between people who want to buy a truck versus people who want to buy a car. So, understanding their aspirations, their motivations. Uh, is I think really important. So I'm wondering what you all think of this and whether or not, you know, has, is there a shift? I, I think there's a real shift underway in sales and marketing where we need to be far more, uh, uh, provide more leadership and talk about uh, and identify and understand our customers' aspirations and dreams as it relates to our products and services because the more that we can, rather than constantly being the guy that's the pain guy that's picking at the scab to try to get them to buy, we're now leading them from a place of positive, affirmative action that's going to help them move forward in some way using our products and services in their lives. And I think that makes a huge difference. So I'm really curious what you think. Love to hear from you. Feel free to leave me a comment or a question. And uh, yeah, look forward to the conversation. Thanks a lot.